All right. Uh, good morning, everyone. Welcome to Comet and Sprint 15 review demo. Uh, this sprint began July 6th and it wraps today, July the 19th. Uh, this sprint is a continu continuation of our team's focus on the full process of depositing content. Um, but I'll hand it over to Tamsin so that um, they can walk us through what was actually accomplished during the sprint. Sure. I, I want to start by saying that this was an extremely productive sprint on a whole bunch of different axes. And we had days of work where we merged between 20 and 30 separate code changes. Um, so it felt really good to have a super productive uh, uh, and multi multiply active team during this this sprint. And I, I'm really excited at the possibility of that continuing through the rest of the work cycle. Um, it really feels like this team has hit their stride. And I want to thank everyone for the work that they did this sprint. Um, our main goal for this sprint and, and uh, continuing a little bit into the next is to uh, have a robust uh, published life cycle from, uh, from Comet into uh, the OAI PMH endpoint. I'll, I'll remind folks that the reason we've set up an OAI PMH endpoint is to provide us an easy target for that published life cycle. And then I think next sprint, we're uh, refocusing our efforts a little bit. I think we're, we'll close the PMH work and then we'll refocus a little bit on doing the same thing, but with Shoreline, Triple IF, and, and possibly uh, I think maybe like it's after work cycle, but uh, we're hoping that the triple IF publish will lead also to a really low hanging fruit kind of uh, integration with the spotlight, the starlight exhibit app. Um, so that continues to be our main focus. I want to demo a couple of things that we uh, that we got done that are adjacent to that. Um, the first is that a lot of work happened this sprint on the issue of configurable metadata. Um, so in the past, we've shipped the various Comet deployments with uh, a sort of dummy basic metadata file um, as the conf metadata configuration. And both the form of that file and its contents were sort of fake. Um, and during this sprint, we made a change so that uh, Comet now speaks the M3 metadata schema language, which, which was developed as part of the, the San Vera community effort a year or so ago. Um, and you can see like the file that we're using for the configuration is still uh, pretty pretty empty, um, but we're now loading this metadata configuration. The form's the best place you can see that, that uh, coming through, um, but the whole app is configured to generate its metadata schemas from a M3 file, and our goal is that each campus will have its own metadata experts maintain those configurations and will be able to, uh, to just see the metadata configuration that each campus is maintaining uh, work throughout the app. So I think if I do like, um, Um, so some of the things that are configurable here are the cardinality of each field, um, what what predicates it uses, et cetera. Um, so I'll we'll go ahead and English. Um, we're not yet supporting controlled vocabularies, though M3 does. 
Um, and I'll double up here. And I think we demoed this last week sort of accidentally, but I want to confirm that uh, that our access control configuration through this page is working. So if I make this object publish, or <laughs> if I make this object public, then we should see it come up as public. Um, oh yeah, there's some metadata. Um, and when I save the object, oh, we're not really displaying any metadata, are we? Um, so that's interesting. Okay, that's maybe a thing to call out. Uh, we probably want to get a ticket open for this. Um, but anyway, this object has saved with the metadata that we've put in the form. Um, and again, sort of throughout the app, we should see that uh, that the configuration is derived from from that config file and and not anymore from the dummy one. Um, okay. Uh, I have another object to submit to demo the next thing that we've been working on, which is having uh, in order to to see end to end object publish uh, into say the geodata site, one of the things that we want to be able to do is to create derivative content from the files. So uh, a simple example of that would be just a smaller thumbnail image for an image or a thumbnail uh, image from a PDF. Um, so that we have something simple we can display. For the geodata stuff, we have a couple of tickets open for really specific derivative types um, where we wanna see like Mercator projections generated from, from, uh, from shape files. Um, I, think that's, I think that's the ticket that's open. Um, anyway, if I, uh, in order to do that, we need to be able to do sort of triggered background pro processes uh, on object ingest. So if I do like, let's do uh, the first step, the first example of a object that has, I'll oh, keep this one private. Um, the first example of a, of a, background process like that that we wanted to get in place was, uh, oh, where'd that go? I don't know where my browser just went. Here it is. Can you still see this page? No, I can't see this page. My desktop's just going a little wild. I see that page. Okay, I'm gonna refresh and try again because this doesn't seem to be a problem with the app. This seems to be a problem with me. <laughs> um, okay, so if I, uh, if I go ahead and create an object, um, we have a background process uh, that I think soon what we're what we're expecting is to be able to have a couple of different background processes trigger when we submit an object. Um, we're really close on the derivative process, but what we got working this time is this char file characterization. Um, and if I submit a file that's a JPEG, there we go. <laughs> Uh, that looks more like the desktop behavior that I'm expecting. Um, and then I, uh, I'll see that it says that it's processing in the background. Um, and you can see here it says not yet characterized. I'm curious if I can catch it. Let's do. Oh, yeah. Background job processed. Uh, so now, um, <laughs> upon reload, you can see 
that we have some characterization data. Um, so what's happened is the FITS tool, um, which actually runs a number of uh, different file characterization tools over the file and generates a XML file out of that that has some, some data about whatever this file is, has inspected this and decided what it is. Um, this is a little bit more sophisticated than having us submit a mime type or uh, or use the file extension. So like, I don't have a demo ready for this, but if I submitted a JPEG that was named image.txt, it would figure out that it's a JPEG and, uh, and we'd be able to do future processes on it with respect to the real content of the file as opposed to just whatever it happened to be named. Um, so I think where you lost me was somewhere around this page. Um, I, I, what I was saying when uh, we left off was that this object has now, or this file has now been characterized. We understand some more about, um, we understand some more about what it is than we would from just the, uh, from just the basic description that would we get from the file extension and or a user submitted mime type. Um, and if I uh, edit this file to, uh, to add a new text file, then um, I've now got three because I because I did this after we all left last time. So this one's not yet characterized. It's doing the background job. Um, but in the meanwhile, this other one that I submitted did get characterized. Let's see if we got it. Yeah, OK. So, the, so we're able to see that this is just a plain text file um, and that it's small. I think there's like a few characters, a few characters in it. Um, and that's, so that's the characterization feature. Um, we, we, we run that on every file that's submitted on content that is considered the original file for any given file set. We also want to run a process of generating thumbnails and possibly other derivatives based on them. Um, but that's not something that we can demo just yet. Uh, it's pretty close to being carried over the line. Um, the last thing that I want to show for work that we can actually demo for you this sprint is that if I add an object to a collection, let's make an demo for test collection one, and then I put it in test collection one, then I can uh, see, first of all, here that it's in test collection one, but then more significantly for this, um, can see it down here. Uh, on the collection page. Um, at some point until recently, we had a couple of different collection pages um, and we've consolidated them all into this one. So anywhere that that you're viewing a collection should land on this page right here. Uh, please ignore this button labor, label uh, placeholder.txt. It seems like we have some missing translations somehow. Um, that's maybe an uh, upstream issue. It must be an upstream issue. Um, OK, so those are the things that I have uh, ready to demo for you today. Um, we did a bunch of work on three other things that I want to call out that I, that I can't yet demo for you, but, but I want to draw attention to because a, a lot of work got done on them. Um, 
One of those is that we did uh, do some work on our uh, IIIF project, Orange Empire, which the, the goal of that project is just to agree as a group about how we'll provide uh, how we'll provide a IIIF image server over time. Um, and what we've done so far is we've set up the configuration management to deploy that, that image server. Um, and I think that next sprint we'll be able to demo um, demo content in that image server from like from a, a general uh, standpoint, like probably just some dummy content. Um, the just to refresh people's memory, the goal of IIIF is to provide a set of uh, web services for uh, down for manipulating images. So like if we've got a very large uh, base image, then IIIF is going to give you like the ability to view parts of it or uh, browse through pages uh, with a generic set of image viewers that that are uh, that are interchangeable. So like a lot of different image image viewers work work with IIIF um, and including um, we're hoping that what we'll see as part of the IIIF work in general is that like if I've got an image in here, we'll see first of all the thumbnail, which will actually generate from a from a derivative static lead, but uh, but a sort of like zoom and pan image viewer up in this page to say uh, to say give you a give you a a pretty robust preview of that. Um, we're also, again, hoping that that, that IIIF service will be the integration point for uh, the exhibits platform. Um, the other thing that we've been working on that's related to the publish lifecycle, that's, but that but is really concrete, is arc minting. So, um, I'll remind folks that we do have this sort of approved workflow. And uh, this won't trigger an arc mint today, but perhaps as soon as tomorrow it will. If I do, if I move this through the workflow steps, um, one of the things that you can do when deploying a, a Comet app is, is sort of have per campus workflow configurations. So, uh, so we're wiring it in so that in the in this sort of basic workflow that we're showing in the in the dummy app, um, uh, you can see that it moved to a different workflow state and uh, it's completed, and there's comment is here. Um, but the what actions happen at, in response to transitions from one workflow state to another is configurable. Uh, and what we're, we've been working on is adding uh, arc minting to this process. So, so that in this default workflow, if you approve an object, it mints a, uh, a permanent identifier and assigns that as metadata on the object. Um, uh, and that's through easy ID. Uh, I think that will work for uh, for like probably tomorrow, but uh, but if not if not then then certainly for a demo next spring. Um, and there has also been a variety of other behind the scenes work um, on both the uh, metadata API and the OAI platform to finish up the integration with that. Um, in, in the past, we've shown a button on the collection page to publish that was up here. We've suppressed that button until we can make it actually uh, 
show the object in or show the collection in the uh, in the OAI endpoint. Um, but in general, I think we're expecting to be able to demo that end to end early early in the next sprint and and sort of carry on for other publishing strategies for um, individual objects to to front ends like like shoreline that's the that's the main work we're planning for next sprint is to continue to to chip away at that end to end publish process um, that's it it was again sort of a hodgepodge of a sprint we got a lot of work done on a lot of different fronts and it was really nice to see the team being so active on so many different lines of work um, so again lots of lots of technical changes being made every day during this sprint um, so thank thank you to the team thank you tamson and team Surfliner. Awesome.